Hello to all my good South African and African friends and colleagues, to colleagues all over the world, and special thanks to the AfriLex organizing committee for accepting this small paper. The title of our joint uh, paper is Reference Skills or Human-Centered Design Towards a New Lexicographical Culture. And the presentation has been prepared together with Rufus Haus. I don't think I need to present him. You know him very well. He's an honored member of AfriLex and professor at the University of Stellenbosch where I've also been extraordinary professor for more than a decade. And I have behind me a very beautiful landscape close to Stellenbosch. In the presentation, we'll deal with four central concepts. One is dictionary culture. Another is user friendliness. Then we have reference skills. And finally, human-centered design. And we'll argue that reference skills are something belonging to the past, whereas human-centered design is what we're going to work with in the future. We all know that plenty of dictionaries suffer from space restraints and that lexicographers in order to save space have used condensed entries with codified items, abbreviations, and complex structures uh, to relate the different uh, types of data. All this have made it quite difficult for users to retrieve the required information, in some cases completely impossible, and so on. And uh, regretfully, uh, many digital, not all, but many digital have uh, continued this practice, uh, at least to a, a certain extent. We found an article from Hausmann from 1989, where he deals with the history of lexicography and uh, inform us that uh, there's a strained relationship between lexicography and society. And the term stationary culture and user friendliness does reflect this friction because when we have user friendliness, then lexicography adapts to society Whereas dictionary culture means that society adapts to lexicography. Uh, according to Hausmann, user friendliness prevails when lexicographers compile dictionary from which target user can easily retrieve the required information. On the other hand, dictionary culture prevails when target users are trained to acquire the reference skill required to successfully consult the lexicographer's dictionary. And that creates a complementary relationship between lexicographers and users. Lexicographers, they plan and make the dictionaries, whereas users have to prepare themselves, enable themselves to find and retrieve the required information. Is that arrogance or ignorance? Uh, I'm not going to say anything, but it's a sort of alienation between the lexicographer, the producer of the dictionary, and the user of this product. And of course, that doesn't mean that you don't have to be trained when you have bad dictionary, but we will uh, argue in favor of producing good dictionaries with good uh, uh, skill uh, design so we can avoid all these uh, reference skills. The discussion is ongoing. Here I have a, a quotation from a book that Yamada wrote seven years ago uh, on learner's dictionary and when he said when there are unsuccessful dictionary searches that it's either the dictionary or the user that ha has to blame. Now in his review of the book Michael Rondell said that his default position is that the fault lies squarely with the dictionary and the dictionary should be designed well enough to make its uh, use intuitive. And that's what we agree completely with this and that will be the starting point from, for our argumentation. That means reference skills to the past, intuition belongs to the future. And in order to deal with this question, 
will refer to this guy, Don Norman. He's a cognitive scientist. He's also a engineer and he will have been working, for example, in Apple when Steve Jobs were there. I have written a lot of books. Uh, this is one of them, it's my own, it's quite used. Can you see the design of everyday things? And why are we doing this? Because dictionary for most of us are everyday things. So the principle developed by this guy could actually be applied to our products also. Now, uh, according to Norman, users are far too often blamed when they make mistakes while using everyday things. I think we can recognize this. And his idea is that we have to reverse the situation. And to do that, it is the duty of designers to understand people and not the duty of people to understand designers. But well, a major problem in this respect is that engineers are experts, experts in technology, lexicographers in lexicography and other people in other disciplines, but they're very limited in their understanding of people. What, according to Norman, we should accept human behavior the way it is and not the way we would wish it to be. Human centered designs requires as a basic, a good understanding of people and of the needs that the design, the product, the dictionary is intended to meet. And this understanding, according to Norman, comes primarily through observation, because you cannot ask the user, they are frequently unaware of their problems or, or that they, they have problems and so on. And uh, if you turn the whole thing around and requires from the lexicographers of designer that they produce it, they understand the people, then you can have truly good products. Now, what does human-centered design mean? That, that means that you put the human needs, capabilities and behavior first. That is the starting point. And then you design to accommodate those needs, capabilities and ways of behavior. And products should not only be understandable and usable, but they should also be delightful and enjoyable when you use them. You should pay attention to the whole experience, that is the aesthetics of form and the quality of interaction. Because as Norman says, he has written a whole book about it, aesthetic things really perform better. Now, what is the best design? That is the invisible one the one you don't notice, but where you intuitively know what the tool can be used for and how you can use it. Good communication is required if you want good design. The device, the dictionary, the online dictionary, whatever, should indicate what actions are possible, what is happening and what is about to happen. Good communication. And it is especially important when there are problems because that way you can satisfy the users. You explain what is happening, what is the problem, you solve the problem and the users are happy uh, because of this good communication in this things. Now, to obtain this good communication, Norman introduces six uh, basic concepts or principles or whatever he called them. And we think three of them are of special relevance to our discipline namely affordances, signifiers, and feedback. An affordance is not a property in itself, but a relationship between the properties of both a physical object and of a person that is interacting with this object. Here we see this old lady in a chair. The chair, the, the support it gives, it's not a property of the chair, but it's the relationship between the chair and the lady. And the forms helps the person to figure out how the object can be used and what actions are possible uh, without the need for manuals of instructions and so on. The, the affordance may be visible or not, but to be effective, they should be perceivable and discoverable. Uh, if not, there should be something that signals their presence and that is the role of signifiers. A signifier is any perceivable indicator that communicates 
appropriate behavior to a person a communicates. Here we have an example with the sign push on the door. In this case, there's no such sign and the lady is actually destroying the door. Norman considers signifiers to be more important than affordances because they communicate how to use the sign. Communicate, that is the central word here. Uh, some of the affordances are perceivable and others are not. Signifiers are signals, or signs, labels, drawings, arrows, diagrams, and other kind of instructions. Now, some signifiers are simply the perceived affordance. For example, the handle of the door. It is both an uh, affordance, but it's also signifier for us, and the same with the, the physical uh, structure of a switch. Uh, feedback is also an important uh, element, uh, principle of human-centered design, and it must be given after any action to confirm the action and communicates its results. And it must be immediate and informative. I think a lot of dictionaries could learn from that. Poor feedback is distracting, uninformative, and often irritating and entity provoking. Too much feedback, on the other hand, can be even more annoying, annoying than too little. That means that feedback has to be planned and prioritized. Unimportant information must be unobtrusive, whereas important signals should capture attention. Now, as I've already said, dictionaries are also everyday things, at least for a lot of people, especially young people and students and so on. And therefore, the philosophy, the philosophy of human-centered design is relevant for us. The principle of human design can be applied, actually, to dictionaries. And together with the new digital technology, it opens completely new horizons but also poses new challenges to our discipline. We'll now look at some online dictionaries, a very few, regretfully, and we'll highlight some of the positive aspects we have found that we're saying one of the best ones, but also some of the problems that still have to be solved. This is the Oxford uh, Dictionary in English Spanish on the, the Lexico uh, platform. Here you have the UK dictionary activated. You also have a small arrow, it's a normal signifier that indicates that you can open it and then you can see all the dictionaries to, you can actually access. Here you have another signifier. It's very easy to understand the site language. You can click on the arrow there also and then you get the two options, English and Spanish. If you go, for example, to the Cambridge Dictionary, you will have many languages, I think it's uh, more than 20 and so on. Here you have the search field, where they will uh, subdued uh, letters, you can say type a word or a phrase, so you really know where you have to work. If you don't have all the characters or letters, you can click on the keyboard and then they come up here. You can also start writing and then you will get a list of uh, the word terminations, the most likely word terminations, which is something what, which is based on machine learning is the big uh, publishing house and companies are really investing a lot of money in this aspect uh, recently. Then you have a uh, the magnifier, it means that you click there, then you have the search. And if you want to delete everything in, instead of going doing it letter by letter, you just click on this signifier and everything is there. Here you see a lot of signifiers. Well, they are affordances, but the signifiers communicate what you're going to do. This is an example of good uh, design. Here you see another example uh, of good design where you get feedback you have searched for specific, it's not there. You, you're informed that it's not there. You're getting even alternative solutions, what as Norman said, and that is really a good example of good feedback and good communication. 
Here we have an example of bad communication. It's taken from the Royal Spanish uh, dic uh, Dictionary. Here you see abbreviation, which nobody understands. There are more than 400, native, 400 million native speakers of Spanish. I can assure you that more than 350 million will not understand a clue what all these abbreviations are about. It's a design, a uh, an example of very bad communication. We'll now uh, look at one article in the Oxford uh, Dictionary, consent. You can see it's quite long. It is the default one. We have noun, verb, you have phrases, and then you have the origin etymology. But we'll go here and uh, we will uh, click on it and uh, then we will get the small article with one meaning of the noun, permission for something to happen and so on. And then you'll see there more example senses, more than this one, no change to be made without the consent of all the partners. You can click on that, you have a plus, and it means you can click and then you have all of the examples here. There are more, but I cannot have all of them. And then you have once more, more examples with a minus, and that is another sign of good communication, how to go back. You click on it and it disappears. Good communication, really. Then you have synonyms, and you can do the same. You get four synonyms, agreement, as and congruence, accord. But you can also view more synonyms here. And if you do that, you actually leave this dictionary and go to uh, one of the famous uh, British or English uh, dictionaries with synonyms. And, and what you see here is actually that you get the same Four at first, and then you get more synonyms. But imagine if you are a learner, a non-native speaker, that is, you will really want to know, if you want to use one of them, what does this word specifically mean? There's no way. You click on them, nothing happens. This is a blind alley, and it's really an example of bad communication, bad design. In the Cambridge Dictionary, it was in many aspects until now, it's similar to the Oxford one. You can actually click on one of these uh, synonyms and you get the definition. However, when you have clicked on one of them, you cannot go back. It's also a blind alley. So here's something to be improved in dictionary making. And the problem is also here, if you go back, you have to choose between three of them. You have to remember in which dictionary it was. Now, another problem, of course, is information overload. I have taken the article here from Cambridge Dictionary. We all know it's a big problem with publicity and so on. It's used to sustain uh, the, the dictionaries to find money for it, but it's not really good for the users. Here's another example of bad uh, design. It's once more from the Royal Spanish Academy. And you see they have advertising with big letters, uh, colors, much more important dominant than the functional words, uh, how to do what you have to write and so on. It's also a, an example of bad communication. Now, conclusions and perspectives. The concept of intuitive use is more advanced than what we have traditionally been referring to as user friendliness. Intuitive use was a dream, it was really a dream a few decades ago, but now it can be achieved due to new technologies and techniques. And that means that we have to go for a new lexicographical culture and not what we have called dictionary culture until now with user friendliness. We have to shift to intuitive use. And in this new culture, it is the lexicographers sole responsibility that their products can be used successfully by the target users. The target users, they should have no special skills. They should be able to use their products intuitively. This is the new lexicographical culture. It does not mean that the users should not have some basic capabilities allowing them to use the product. Of course, they should be able to read or write. Yes, you also have a certain proficiency level, at least in one of the relevant languages, if not, they'll not understand anything. 
And if it's a specialized dictionary, they should have some basic knowledge of the discipline or topic uh, treated in the dictionary. But when it comes to navigating in the device, in the dictionary, or using it, then no special skills should be required. The, shine, the design should be human-centered and user-centered as explained by Don Norman. Thank you very much to all of you for listening uh, to this presentation.